Here we have a fresh Laravel application. Also, I use Laravel Breeze to scaffold the authentication. What I'll show you today is a simple approach to role-based authorization using middleware. Say that, for example, we want to have a section that only users with an administrative role can access. Maybe a dashboard that every logged in user can see, and another section that is restricted to editors and supervisors only. But you don't want to add any external packages to your code, which gives you more control over your application's codebase. We will begin by creating a couple of migrations to handle the roles and the relationship between the users and the roles. I will create all the things that I need with one artisan command. First, I'll generate a role model class, a migration file, a model factory, and I should probably see the table with a few default roles, so let's add a database seeder. If this is too much to write, don't worry, we can make it shorter like this. Migration, factory, and seeder. Open the migration file first. We just need one column for the role name. And that's it, very simple. Now open the role model class and set the fillable array. Go to the database seeder for roles and add a couple of entries. You can either use the role model class with the create method and pass in the value for name and create one line for each of the roles. For example, we want the lowest level role to be user, then one role for editors, one for supervisors, and finally the admin role. If you don't want to use the role model, you can use the DB facade instead. With the insert method, you can create all the rows at once, like this. In my case, I'm going to stick with the DB facade. Now let's seed the users table and create one user for each of the roles we have, just so we can test that the roles work as they should. The default database seeder has a commented out section for seeding the users table using the user factory. The benefit of using the factory is that I don't have to worry about the rest of the user fields like the password, those are taken care of by the factory. Instead, I can just focus on the fields that I want to hard code, which are the name and the email. We can do this in two ways. The first way to do this is by creating a new line for each user. For example, this line will be for the user called test user, which will have a user role. Next, we can create one for the editor user, another one for the supervisor, and finally one for the admin. The other way that we can achieve the same results is using a sequence. Let me comment out this section first, and then uncomment the first line up here. Right after the factory, add a call to count with four. This means the factory will create four users. And right after that, add a call to sequence. Each parameter in the sequence will be used for each of the users created. The first user will get a name of test user and an email of user at example.com. Now let's add three more entries for the editor user, one for the supervisor, and one for the admin. The sequence basically iterates over the list of variances for each model created. So if instead we create eight users, it will go over the first four variances, and on the fifth one, it will go back to the start and create another test user, supervisor user, and so on. I'm gonna use the sequence for this example. Finally, we need to define the model relationship to the rows in the user model class. In here, we create a new function called roles. We will return a belongs to many relationship and we pass the role class name to it. Next, we need a pivot table to store the relationship between roles and users. Let's start with the migration.
In here we will add two unsigned big integer columns called user ID and role ID. And then the corresponding foreign keys, one for the user ID, referencing ID on users, and another one for role ID, referencing ID on roles. Let's also create a seeder for the role user table, just so we can give the default users their corresponding roles. Okay, open that up, and the approach we are going to take here is a bit more granular. First, let's grab all the roles and all the users. Okay, now that we have them in collections, we can say users, first where, and here we will look for the email user at example.com. And to the result of that search, we will call roles attach. Notice that I'm using parentheses here. And to that we pass another search where we will look for a role with the name of user and access the ID on that result. Basically, we are attaching the role of user to the test user. Okay, let's duplicate this uh, three times and change this to editor, this one to supervisor, and this one to admin. Okay, now that we have all the seeders, let's add calls to each one in the database seeder class. Right after the users, we add a call to the role seeder class and a call to the role user seeder class. So first we seed the users, then the roles, and finally the user roles. Okay, let's try that out. Let's try logging in as a regular user to make sure everything works. The default password is the word password. Okay, now let's add two more pages to this application. One will be available to editors and supervisors and the other one will only be available to admins. And I think we can get away with just creating different routes, each one returning the same view. Let's duplicate this route here. Change the URL to editors, for example. And just so we know where we are, Let's pass a variable called message to the view. It will say available only to editors and supervisors. And finally, change the route name. Now open the dashboard view and here we display either the message or just the text you're logged in. Like this. Let's give it a try. If we refresh, it's the same. But if we navigate to editors, we can see the new message in here. Perfect. Let's add one more route for admins, change the URL, the message, and the name. Okay, let's try that out. Excellent. Now we can implement our role middleware. Let's start by creating our middleware class using this artisan command. Now let's open that file. It's located in app HTTP middleware. Here is where we define the logic for our middleware. This is the idea. Let's go back to the routes for a moment. I want to be able to add another middleware after out, where we can say role and pass the role names as parameters, allowing for multiple roles separated by a comma. Okay, back to the middleware class. In the function signature, let's add one more parameter called roles. This is where the list of roles will be passed as a parameter to our middleware. Now let's trim and explode the parameter using comma as the separator. If you don't want to do this in two separate lines, just move the trim call in here. But I'll keep the two lines for readability. Either way is fine. Now I'm going to use some wishful coding here and use a non-existing function in my user model called has role. I can get the currently logged in user with request user and then call has role passing in the list of roles. 
this call will return true if the user belongs to any of the roles passed in in the list. So we can check this with an if statement. But what we can do is negate the result, therefore if the user does not have any of the roles passed in the list, we abort with a status code of 401, which is the code for unauthorized request. All we have to do now is create this has row function. Let's open the user model and add a new public function called has row. And this will receive a list of roles. Thankfully, the implementation is fairly simple. Let's uh, think of the idea first. We want to return true when the user has at least one role. So let's query the roles relationship with this roles. Notice I'm not using parentheses here. This is because I want to retrieve the list of roles as a collection. Now use where in to search by name and then pass the list of roles as the second parameter. Basically this will filter the collection and return a new collection where the role name matches any of the provided names on the list of roles. Now, what we want to return is true if the user has any role in the list. We can do this in two ways. We can call count on this new collection and return that result. If the list has one or more items, that evaluates to true. Or we can use the isNotEmpty function instead, which returns a boolean instead of an integer. I'll use this one for this example. The next step is to register our new middleware. We do this inside the kernel.php file located in the app HTTP folder. Since this is intended for routes, let's add an entry in the route middleware array. Now we can restrict access to our routes. For example, let's not allow regular users to the editor's route, only editors and supervisors. And yes, the search is case sensitive, but I'm doing this on purpose just to demonstrate that just because we sometimes get the expected results doesn't mean everything works. Now I'm going to log in as a regular user and navigate to the editor's route. And as expected, we get the unauthorized page in return, which is exactly what we wanted, right? Well, wrong. Let me explain. To make this easier to demonstrate, let's add a couple of links to the navigation bar. Open resources, views, layouts, navigation.blade.php and duplicate the dashboard link a couple of times. This link will be for editors and this one for admin. Okay, that looks good. Now let's only show links the user has access to. Since the functionality is tied to the user model, we can add a check in the Blade template like this. This link will be visible to editors, supervisors, and admins. This time I'll use the correct role name with the first letter in uppercase. And finally the admin link is visible only to admins. Since I'm logged in as a regular user, I can only see the dashboard link. Now let's try logging in as an editor. Okay, great. But if I try to navigate to the editor's page, even though I have the editor role, I don't have access to the route. To solve this, I'll make one small adjustment to the has role function, allowing me to use lowercase names. First, I'll use collect, since the roles variable is an array and I need it as a collection. Then on that, I'll call map to iterate over all the items in the list. And as the callback function, I'll use the fat arrow function here, pass in the row and return that same row with the first letter in uppercase, using the str helper and the uc first method. I'll assign the results back to the rows variable. And we're good to go. The last issue we have is that admins should have access to everything, but as of now, if we log in as an admin, 
We do have access to the admin section, but we're not allowed in the editor's route. We can solve this easily by adding one small change to the middleware. We will just add one extra call to the has role method and check specifically for the admin role. If the user has that role, we just move along with the request. Alright, that'll be all for this video. If you found this helpful, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.